there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. It is a beautiful sunny day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and we're going to be getting into the beehives today. So come along on the farm vlog as we work with a couple swarms that we caught. So honeybees swarm and we'll get into more detail about why they swarm and what they do in just a little bit. But the honeybees swarmed, we captured the swarm, we put them in a box, a smaller box, and that box is getting too crowded for them so we're going to move them to larger boxes. We'll show you what the frames of bees look like. We'll show you what healthy hives look like. Hopefully we'll find a queen bee. We'll be able to show you that and we'll just have some fun working with the bees and a little bit of education. So come along today on the farm as we work with our honeybees and have a little bit of fun. All right. Woo! I'm getting suited up I want to thank John over at Triad Bee Supply guys we get all of our bee supplies from Triad Bee Supply or triadbeesupply.com John is a fellow that owns that business he is a good friend of mine he doesn't pay me to say that he's just a good friend he's just a great guy triadbeesupply.com is where we get all of our bee supplies first thing let's talk about is preparedness I have one of these little baskets that I got from the farmer's market and inside this basket is pretty much everything I'll need for working my bees today. My hive tool, all the tools that I'll need for working my bees. I've got my gloves in here so when I need to jump in the beehive I can grab my basket and I can run with it. I also have entrance reducers and all the small things that I think I might need. Also a little propane torch in here or this is actually map gas for lighting up my smoker if I needed. Now today we probably won't use a smoker because it's a high nectar flow time of year and that means that the bees are happy and happy bees normally don't stink. So I guess you can kind of take this as a bit of a beginner beekeeping lesson too. If you guys are seasoned beekeepers and you have any comments or any suggestions, please leave them down there in the comment section. Or if you have any questions, if you're new to beekeeping, please leave them down there in the comment section. There are a lot of things that we need to keep with us all the time consistently. I always have a hive tool in the gator because it's super duper handy to have with me here on the farm. So today we have an eight frame and we have a 10 frame. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a five frame nuke that's stacked double high. In other words, there are 10 frames and we'll go over there and show you. And we're gonna turn that into a double stacked 10 frame. In other words, we're adding 10 frames to that hive and that hive is rocking. That's the first one we're gonna get into. And the second one we're gonna get into is a five frame nuke. That's a custom box that I built and we're gonna put it into an eight frame box. Pretty cool. I use all medium supers because they're all interchangeable. Medium supers meaning the height of the box. So some people use little short boxes, which are good for honey. Some people use mediums, which are good for honey and brood. And some people use a brooder box, which is a very large box that's very good for brood. Now, when it comes to winter time, you can exchange these boxes if the bees get in the wrong place. In other words, if the bees are all the way down in the bottom and you want them all the way up at the top, then you can move your hives around and they're all interchangeable, kind of like Legos. That's why I use all mediums. So looking at the bee yard, there were only three hives here when we first started, the three tallest hives, one, two, three. All the rest of these are swarms that we caught this year. Absolutely amazing. We'll pop the top of this and these have screened inner covers so you can see down in there. We'll pop the top of one here so you can see in there. This is the most recent swarm that we captured. And you can see there are a lot of bees rocking in there. We have to make a run for more supplies because this is ready for another box to go on top. These bees are getting crowded. Now the hives that we're going to give the most attention today are the most crowded hives. This is the second most crowded hive and you can see how skinny it is compared to this one. That's an eight frame, that's a five frame, that's an eight frame, and that big wide one is a ten frame. So that's what we're doing. We're going to turn this five frame into a ten frame. So why do we have blocks and rocks and heavy things on top of these hives? Because when the wind gets up it blows right up this hill and will blow the lid right off the top of these hives. I've seen it happen and it actually killed one hive this winter. The lid blew off, it rained in it, and the bees froze to death. We're gonna open this guy up and get into it. 
So what I just did was stack two cinder blocks up here so we could take this five frame nuke hive and sit it right in front of where it's located so the bees will still continue to go in it as we replace the old hive with a newer hive. This hive probably weighs 40 pounds. We've got it in position. It is a bit tipsy. This might get, get a little funky here. Gotta move kind of fast. Okay. What I did was I had this on a metal table and the metal table needed to be turned this way in order for the 10 frame hive to fit on here. Now I'm gonna check for stability. Seems good for a minute. We're gonna take the cover off. It should be propolized, in other words, sticky. You'll hear that crunch, a little crunchy sound. No bees on the top, we're gonna get rid of that. Okay, and then we're gonna take the inner cover off. These bees should be fine, they shouldn't be very grumpy. Should be fairly happy with the situation. Okay, now there are five frames in here and they're absolutely loaded with honey. And what we want is we want that honey in what's gonna be our future top super. So I'm gonna take those five frames out gently and place them into the new box. Nice and easy. Honeybees pick up on movement. So if you're moving slow and gentle and easy, try not to squish any bees. When you squish a bee, it puts out a pheromone. And you can see here, that's a healthy frame of bees. And they're just in there working. There's a little bit of brood in there. So we've got honey, brood, those little wormy looking things in there, and then honey. Super awesome. You see a little bit of pollen in there. All of what we see here is capped brood and a little bit of honey on the outside edges. Very, very cool. Here's your queen bee, right there. Great old big girl, right there. That is a queen bee. Isn't that beautiful? We've got her in our new hive now. We know we need to move fairly fast once we get our queen bee in her new hive. These bees will notice almost immediately that their queen is not present. All right, now we're gonna take our top box off, set it to the side here just out of the way and then we'll pop the next five frames out set them in the bottom here these guys will sense that their queen is not here and they will get irritable at some point that is a successful move these are the bees that remain inside the box we'll take these bees and we'll give the box a nice love tap right over top of the new box like so just like that these bees will smell their queen in the new box and go right to it it's in the same place that the old box was we'll move these cinder blocks out of the way and they'll have their new home awesome we just doubled their apartment size now it's the warmer months so we'll put a screen top cover on and then we'll put our regular top cover on okay we'll set our cinder block back on the top of the hive now you can hear and see that there's a little bit of confusion going on right now because the bees notice there's a difference something's different here where do we go what do we do well it's going to take them a few hours to realize hey the hives changed we're still in the same spot but the hive looks a little bit different so just so you know it's going to take them a day or so to figure out so there'll be a little bit of confusion for a while but they'll do just fine we're going to go over to the next box before we go to the next box let's talk a little bit about the construction of the hive and what's inside so the first thing you get to is the top cover this is a commercial top cover very very simple that little mark is from where I had an inner cover inside there so the top cover is first then 
For the summertime, we put a screened inner cover, and that's what you're seeing there. In the wintertime, this would be all wood, and this sits right on top of the honeybee hive like this and then the lid goes on. Now inside here, this is an eight frame hive. There would be eight frames, and this is a frame. And this is what they look like before the bees draw out the comb. That is basically a frame with what we call foundation. And you see these little stripes? That's wire to hold the foundation in place. So when you put it on your honey extractor, it doesn't rip apart. If it didn't have that little wire holding it in place, when you put it in your honey extractor and it spins really, really fast, it would sling this apart and it would just fly all to pieces inside your honey extractor. So eight of these are inside this hive. Basically, at the front entrance of the hive, when a hive is small and not very strong, you can't leave that entire entrance open. So this little block is in place. So we'll shrink it down to this small, small space for a brand new hive. Then for a older hive, we'll rotate it to that size block. And then as they get older and older, we'll just take it all away. So you've got a couple different options, brand new hive, little bit stronger hive and then all the way away for a really really strong hive that hive is really really strong so we took the entrance reducer away pretty cool now on the bottom of the hive we'll go on and show you that this is called a screened bottom board the screened bottom board allows that varroa mite and any kind of invasive species such as hive moss or hive beetle larva or something like that, it could fall right through the wire and never get back into the hive. And it helps ventilate the hive and keep it cool. In the winter time, flip it over, there's a little slot right here. And you slide a piece of corrugated plastic in here and basically that seals them off for the winter time. You can see, it's like a little drawer, I guess. Pretty cool. My plan is for our next honeybee video to show you how pollen traps work. So we have some cool pollen traps we're gonna put on three hives out here, and we'll show you how pollen traps work. We can actually harvest bee pollen from the bees. They don't need 100% of the honey they use or 100% of the pollen they use. So we can utilize that for us, for our family, and we can sell it. Awesome. So let's get in this little hive. It's a little bit different than the one we just got in. So we're basically working off the same principle that we did before. I'm gonna actually set this hive right here out of the way. And we're gonna pop the cover off of this little guy right here. And it's a tiny hive. I'm gonna bring the camera in and let you see it real quick. We'll pop the cover off of that. It has five frames in there. We'll just slip them right into the new hive and we'll have it done. Very, very simple. I have not checked these bees to see if they're laying eggs yet. So this is gonna be a discovery for me. Here's what the little hive looks like. And this is a hive that I made for myself. So this is bee jail right here. I made this one myself, very simple. And this is from a swarm from a neighbor who is a subscriber. He called me up the day that we caught three swarms out here and said, hey man, I got a swarm up here. It must be from your bees. So we went up and caught these guys. So in this instance, we're working with half as many bees as we were before. We'll lift the cover off. Hopefully they're still in there looking good. Yeah, fairly weak hive. So you can see I've got this labeled number two. Number two. Shake those guys down in there. Again, this was a very small swarm, so I don't expect it to be a rock star. I want to pull out my center frame here. Now these bees may be not doing so well. Looking in here, I don't see a very good situation. However, I do see what I'm looking for, and that is eggs. Little tiny white specks in there. You probably cannot see. There are eggs in there. They look like rice, they look like little rice checks. So we're gonna set this over in our new hive. We're gonna move fairly quickly here. This time of day, which are about high noon right now, this is when the bees are most likely the least active. In other words, they're out foraging. They're the least active in the hive. There'll be the fewest amount of bees in the hive at this time of day. That's why we work them at this time of day. This is not a strong hive. This is what a weak hive looks like. Very, very weak swarm. Trying to find the queen here. 
She's an older queen. She's a big fat queen. She's right there. Right there. Right here. Big fat one. Let's get her head down in there. We'll set our new hive down here in place. Hopefully these bees will do well. Just gotta give them some time. Shake the bees down in there. We didn't quite double their apartment size. Put the lid on. So the bees are out of jail. <laughs> awesome guys, awesome. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into beekeeping. I hope you guys will take up beekeeping. It's very, very fun. We'll be doing a whole lot more videos this summer on beekeeping. We'll get into the hives a little bit more. We'll be extracting some honey soon. Probably about June 15th is when we'll harvest. So we've got yeah, another month and a half or so, something like that. Guys, I want to thank you a whole lot for coming to the channel today. Please pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll teach you some more about honeybees and what all's going on here on the farm. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here in Sweden.